you all at the subject of interest of my paper is the warrior on a horse in Skopje, considered as a carrier of information, which interprets meanings in the environment where it exists in. Anthropologically, by using semiotics and symbolics, I'm going to um, show this monument as a narration intertwining various overviews, and thanks to the myth of the person it personifies plays an important role in building in the building of the national identity uh, based on the analysis uh, we are talking uh, so based on the research that accordance to the principles of the social and cultural anthropology encompasses the narrations of the inf 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 providers of information taken through formal and informal interviews and data received by internet sites where, discussion, where discussions initiated on blogs related to the topics uh, enable discovery of the significant relations constituted today in the specific domain. It has been con um, conceptualized in several ch uh, chapters. The paper that gives an overview of the Macedonian identity prior and uh, after the independence. And it's... Um, um, and its um, sustenance and uh, that, that brought to intensifying the myth of Alexander the Great. In this paper, the term national identity, although it includes states' identity as in Anglo-Saxon languages, simultaneously reflects more on the ethnic identity of the ethnic Macedonians. Even though there are numerous aspects that uh, identify the identity, I'm not going to talk about that. I'm just going to mention that every ethnic community chooses the elements which are being posed as um, limits to others. And such selected elements as identity categories from which we differ from the others vary dependent on context. That would mean that their competitiveness is interchangeable and dependent on the conditions in which one um, entity lives in. And I'm going to talk about, yes, um, comparison prior, uh, comparison of the period before independence and after dependence. Within uh, Safaria, the Macedonian identity was existed, covered, or hidden behind the collective Yugoslav identity. It, we could see dominance of the Slavic and rejection or n neglect of the presence of ancient in the ethnogenesis of ethnic Macedonians. On the other hand, within the folklore, we could see that there is domination of the myth of Alexander of uh, Macedon in the folklore. The absence of the idea of Alexander is in the concept of the monumental sculptures until 1991. With the proclamation of independence and leaving aside the Yugoslav uh, past, there was, uh, there was a surfacing of a new repressed memory. Majority of the Macedonians in identifying the true roots of their existence, usually the past was exclusively connected or related to the exclusively with the antique or ancient Macedonians. Numerous reactions by the neighbors, directly or indirectly, in danger, endangered the identity, not only the identity of the state Macedonia, but the identity of the majority of population ethnic Macedonians. In such a constellation of crisis and endangerment, the state and the political uh, power government used the image of Alexander the Great as a segment, historical segment. It's stated in the open competition in the uh, municipality, but also as a narrative engraved into the collective memory and uh, made it a real um, image by putting a monument at the central square. This is the monument the figure is alexander the great and is surrounded by 
warriors but other accompanying uh, monumental figures that along that talk about the famous past figuratively this archive of um, the designations are is materialized and the same is an opportunity to revive what has been dormant for a very long time. Its positioning in the square is a place in which the social identity is formed and developed, scene on which the social practices take place and place in which the government is organized and envisaged. Actually, the reaction of the uh, public is the factor, decisive factor that will decide on whether uh, the monument will be deprived of any meaning or the monument will become media powerful symbol by the means of which, uh, with which the community will identify itself. The monument warrior on a horse is a part of, uh, is a part of the public arena was a subject of various discussion that moved in the direction of an avalanche of criticism to positive connotation for its uh, positioning generally accompanied by politically bickering, political bickering. So when the so-called Vomero supporters, those are in the ruling party, because in our society, Vomero supporters and Sudasama uh, supporters, you're, you're not uh, necessarily have to be a supporter, but that's how you're going to be named. So supporters say, welcome for coming of Ace on the square, on the place where it should be. The, those, the opponents are um, complaining about antiquization, connecting it with the situation with Greece. In the internet communication on multiple occasions, we could see statements that the negative attitude is towards the monument is associated with the um, price, that is the cost of the monument, saying that Alexander is great, but, or to nurture identity, but why do we do that with so many monuments? It, it would have been enough to uh, go only with the monument of Alexander, uh, we are in poverty, and so on. Irrespective of the reasons that caused the change of the uh, previously announced Alexander the Great to the naming or renaming of a uh, warrior on a horse, the associations are not different. On the contrary, everyone knows that the warrior on a horse is Alexander the Great, which corresponds to the images and uh, how Alexander the Great is visualized in textbooks and in other literature, in the, even the portals abroad, in the sculpture. Uh, of the in, the in the monument where horse recognized actually Alexander the Great. Analysis of available data show a dominance of positive reactions that often can be seen um, vaguely behind the negative criticism. On my question, what do you think about the monument of Alexander the Great? Usually the respondents say, I don't like it because Vomero made it. Or, well, it's the only one that is of any worth. The monument settings created a space that allows for reinforcement of the national pride and identity creation in accordance with the glorious um, undertakes takings of Alexander. It is for a good, this is a quote, if several years later we will forget about who was for or against the setting up of the monument, Alexander and Bukefal will be here forever. Or another quote, I don't care who says what from any party, I think that Alexander is where he should be. Welcome, Alexander, to Macedonia. It's, of, it's interesting a statement at the same forum, or the person that it pursued, Boyan, 81, that's the 
pseudonym. Alexander is the name that unites. And at the answer of the question why a Macedonian wouldn't like him should be uh, seen that his neighbor, the Greek, the Bulgarian, the Serbs, will take offense into that. So you shouldn't negate yourself in order to be liked by others. The setting up of the monument, not only that it secures the monumentalization of the myth, but through the myth, there is through the monument, one needs to see unification of the um, opposing Macedonians, thanks to the monument, Macedonian, Alexander the Macedonian becomes visible, and it does not depend on any uh, pros and cons. The comment of Boge for the Forum Vodenica says, did you see the size of it? One will see it from Thessaloniki. So this, is in, this statement is in support of the previously said. The monument is in a visible size, seen even from Greece, that we are here, that we exist in contrary to the negation of the Macedonian identity. It is clear that the setting up of the monument secures the continuity of the Macedonian identity as an identity that lasts and that uh, also is the link to the uh, distant past. The sense of being um, separate than the others and unique uniqueness, the, un the sense of uniqueness is a sense that should be registered by the others. So your uniqueness should be registered by the, by the others, yes. And, and uh, that is why the state tries to employ attempts uh, to do nas nation, national branding. The state markets itself as a separate identity outside of its borders through nation branding, attracting visitors in and outside by the means of which it secures sufficient funds in order to build a capital and through the campaigns Macedonian Forever, Invest in Macedonia, international branding it uh, part take the souvenirs as well since the, monium, the Warrior on Horse is one of the most um, sold out uh, souvenirs talking about the national branding. Warrior on Horse can become a powerful enough symbol to, with which the community can identify, but also a symbol that will be a recognizable hallmark. The monument placed on the square does not have the aim only to represent the symbol of the national spirit in terms of inciting patriotic feeling, but it should organize a ritual um, events that will be revived in special occurrences. So this is the grand opening of the monument which is actually a ritual, a ritual that represents a value engraved into the national identity why am i saying this because the opening coincided with the day of the celebration of the 20 years of macedonian independence the event included um, presenting of military or other capacities music spectacle as well as uh, representation by the uh, heads of the state. In accordance with the previously said, that act of actually presenting the Macedonian red line a political discourse. Huge amount of people, as you can see from the images, symbolically demonstrates the unification of the people when it comes to the important issue of the state. This should mean strengthening of the collective memory and demonstration of national cohesion as per the promoted idea. That is how we create a narrative, creating the past, but at the same time offering emotion 
emotions which need, need to be shared. This is of particular importance because societies are not legislation, politics and strategy are actually sharing of ideas, emotions and feelings. The monument is the main decor when it comes to the more important celebrations, events to various municipal or social groups. This is the welcoming of the Macedonian basketball players from Lithuania. This creates a collective memory. Along with this memory, the state creates its identity. The myth of Alexander contains cultural specifics typical for the Macedonian, but such a myth in um, an environment of uh, heated intern identity debate between Macedonia and Greece, it seems that it becomes topical between the Albanians, Vlachs, Serbs, Roma living in the territory of the Republic of Macedonia. Confirmation to this can be found in the internet portals. Even though the stated data there are individual statements, so we need to additionally research the other um, ethnicities and their opinion and statements. There are a lot of ethnicities in the Republic of Macedonia, so therefore through interferences, the myth is being diffused, which later on is developed in, con in concord concordance with the cultural features of the um, ethnical communities. That means that the myth of Alexander uh, can exceed uh, the ethnical cu cultural landmarks. Neither it can be an exclusive figure his image, thanks to the historical date of his labor and successes, can becomes a glorified personality that is desired by all. Even though such narratives uh, can be marginalized, this should be used in order to create a wide social imagination that will be later on provide the full expanded uh, image of Republic of Macedonia. If we relate all this with the monument of Alexander the Great, symbolically can be represented as a location that will secure and provide for the intercultural dialogue of all communities in Republic of Macedonia, even though the status of affairs, at the, the state of affairs at that moment in respect to this is quite unclear. Uh, the monument has an opportunity to become a locus in which different communities have deposited their mythological narratives, not excluding each other, which will ensure the mobilization of all. And these are the conclusions. I'm not going to read through them in the interest of time. I'm going to just rephrase Asman, which says that in despite of the wholeness of one's constructed memory, it is not a totalitarian metaphor. That means that the narratives that around and for uh, the monument are built today are not final or finite, because there is always a relentless interpretation. It's up to the state whether the uh, conceptual memory will be sustained as such or will be altered, because that is how values are created and disseminated. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yes, Mr. Katin. I must admit that the paper of our colleague uh, excited me a lot, but and 
And I'd like just to add on. Uh, you were young in 1984. I was given the novel Alexander the Great by Ulrich Wilken to translate from English into Macedonian, which was previously translated from German into English. At that time, I worked two years on that novel. I translated it. And when I went to the publisher, I went with Alexander the Great. Publisher uh, knows uh, the man says, Katin, how did you write Alexander the Great? Yes. I'm sorry, but maybe for you he is Alexander the Great, but for me he is Alexander Macedonian. And for my people, we know him as Alexander Macedonian. So I took the text and when he uh, talked to some people and two months later when he spoke to some people he uh, called me again and said that we can publish it as Maced Alexander Macedonian. 30 years ago there were Penoshlyski, Kristandonovski, Blažakunevski, 50 names translated from Hellenic into Macedonian and I had difficulties uh, translating, uh, n changing names uh, with endings uh, like os, is, as uh, into Macedonian names. And of course, I missed some. Can you ask the speaker to speak more to the microphone, please? Can you ask the speaker to, to get closer to the microphone? Can you ask the speaker to get close to the microphone? And then I answered. Uh, that I got the novel. At that time, I was in New York, and the novel. I got it. Uh, I got by the family of Lazar Moisov. Lazar Moisov suggested that Ulrich Wilken is the most realistic about Macedonia and Alexander the Great, uh, while other authors which are paid by with big money are against us, are on the Hellenic side, they would not. So that is how it happened. I personally, as a translator, was very happy, and the professor that criticized me, I told her, the, the Latin proverb, traductore, traductore. The tra translator is the greatest traitor, so maybe I was the traitor at that time because I, I mess Macedonialized many novels, uh, many things in that novel. At the same time, in, in the newspaper Nova Macedonia, a few translations were done from Serbian, from Russian, about Cleopatra, about ancient Macedonia, and distinction was made between Helen, Helens and Macedonians. And I think it was a really a great thing, just as your paper and I told Meto, I'm happy when I see Alexander Macedonian uh, in, uh, in the square, in the, in the main square of Skopje. I live nearby, and I, whenever I cross, come, come by, I see it, and I'm very happy. Your paper is great, and I think people would accept it, and uh, every, everything takes time. Believe me, Alexander will, will be loved by everybody, will become part, uh, integral and intimate part of every Macedonian and everybody. I congratulate you on your paper, and I hope we'll have many more. Thank you. The paper doesn't refer uh, on history. I'm not a historian. I don't have historical data. Uh, regardless of history, of the history about Alexander and history, I talk about anthropology, the meaning that the monument determines within Macedonians and which appear as such in certain circumstances at the time of endangering of identity. So it appears as a need for protection, for security. 
of identity without political connotations and without history. Thank you.